Head right back into the KUAM News uh, Zoom room where Governor Lulian Guerrero is uh, standing by. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, Chris. Uh, good morning, Sabrina. Good morning. So we got the news this morning. Good uh, news. Yeah. <laughs> the House passed the uh, American Rescue Plan. The president is expected to address the nation uh, tomorrow, Guam time, uh, to sign it into law. It certainly has to be, I guess, a, a sigh of uh, relief, at least uh, for you, Gov. Uh, w- we still anticipated to receive $661 million? It's a, it's a shot in the arm for our economy, uh, Sabrina. It is really a interim, a bridge, uh, till we get ourselves back on our feet uh, because it's this is not a sustainable way for to run our government. And as I have always said from the very beginning, it's an interim uh, bridge for to get us back uh, on our feet. And what I envision happening, and I've been discussing this with GVB and of course uh, other key stakeholders in our economy, the Guam Chamber of Commerce, the Guam Women's Chamber of Commerce, that um, it's to sustain us for, I would say, maybe a year, year and a half, maybe two years till we get tourism going again. And um, a great focus and attention is going to be made on diversification of economy. I'm really excited about how we've uh, already jump started our aquaculture. I mean, 1,000 pathogen free shrimp a month is already being uh, distributed out there, and there will be more. And I know that uh, investors are coming to Guam in for just that because our um, partner in the aquaculture um, uh, program is saying that they're coming, people from Taiwan, people from Singapore. So in my whole speech also, you heard about how it's very important to get the building permit uh, license processing very efficient. And I'm very, I'm very excited about the aggressiveness of uh, moving it to digitalization. Um, So what would happen is it'll be uploaded and every agency will now see it right away. It's not like, okay, let's wait for, you know, EPA to finish and then it'll go to, you know, I don't know, DPW or then it'll go to GPA. Everybody could see it at the same time so they can work on it at the same time. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Things for our island, Sabrina, are doing really good. Uh, I know there's criticisms out there about me taking off my rose-colored glasses, but I'll tell you, I do not have rose-colored glasses on. This is what's happening in our island. I have a 2020 vision. Uh, I just had cataract surgery three years ago, so my lens are very clear. Gov, do you have 2020 vision or 2021 vision? (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, these are things that have happened. You're part of it. You guys know it. You, you, You guys report it. You guys were very uh, influential in the mask mandate. You know, all the various innovative, creative ways that you were doing to have people wear their masks. Uh, So you know what's going on in our community in terms of the pandemic. In terms of our economy, you know what's going on. Um, and, And again, these are my plans, our administration's plan to grow our economy and move it forward. So this 661 million is going to help. And it's going to be prioritized, of course, uh, to make up for lost revenues. What that means is that um, an agency who hasn't been fully funded because of the revenue shortfall, they need to let me know how much is that so we can uh, help provide that funding source so they can deliver a complete and comprehensive service to our people. Uh, it also means like, for example, customs and quarantine, their main, their main source of funding is the fees that come through the airport. We know those fees have gone down and we know that they will have shortfall as a result of lost revenues due to uh, COVID. 
GVB, our tourism is one of the biggest ones. You know, we've been getting 44 million from Tourist Attraction Fund. I think it's down to eight, nine million. Um, so those are some of the things that uh, we are already in discussions and already GVB is on it. I just talked to the chair of GVB the other day. And uh, of course, uh, former Governor Guterres from GVB, Jerry Paris, Sam Shinohara, all the key players of tourism as to how we're going to move forward to reopen and recover uh, our tourism industry. These guys are on top of it. So this 661 is going to help them right through that period where there is going to be those lost revenues. So I see it, like I said, in 18, 24 months, uh, as that's what they predict is going to be needed to get, get it going. And of course, like we always say, it's also very dependent on how the other countries are doing. And I know Japan just started vaccinating. I know South Korea just started. I don't know if Taiwan has already started, but these guys will get on their uh, vaccination, um, you know, programs and get vaccinated. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can see tourism coming back by, oh gosh, middle of next year, end of next year. Gov, uh, former Governor Guterres, who is also the uh, permitting czar, it said uh, he told us a couple times that he's asking for twenty million uh, out of this uh, aid package, uh, on top of an additional eighteen million to fund this uh, reconstruction of Matapang uh, Beach uh, Park. Now that we're getting the six sixty one, is Uncle Carl going to get his thirty eight mil? He will get the twenty million. He will get whatever it's needed to bring back our tourism. Serious, I, right? Uh, tourism, you know, is serious. And and you know what I think? the uh, Our attraction is going to be unique than, say, in the United States because we can um, come out and say we are safe here. You know, 80% uh, of our people are vaccinated. We're targeting that to be like at the end of June. I hear President Biden is start tar targeting herd immunity uh, by the end of June. And I sure wish he, they do because those are also our returning travelers uh, coming from a very um, risky uh, coronavirus infested country. Not just the basic coronavirus, but variants. So anyway, we I just want uh, the people to know that the actions that we take and the decisions that we make are based on science, they're based on data, they're based on advice from experts, from the business community, from the medical community, from the uh, economic uh, advisors, and so on down the line. We, we are getting very competent advice, and we are getting very uh, competent experts, not just locally, but also federally. I wanted to ask. So um, we're very fortunate. I, I just want to say we're very fortunate. And and yes, I am so sad that we lost 133 lives that probably should have never been lost. But that's the nature of pandemics. I am also very encouraged that our people of Guam cooperated tremendously. I mean, you go out there and everybody's wearing masks except for a few naysayers, right? But even if we vaccinate those naysayers, that'll be great. That'll be great. It would protect our community, it would protect us, yeah. Gov, Gov um, when you talk about, oh, go ahead, sorry. No? No? Well, okay. I, yeah, I wanted to get your reaction um, to uh, senators that are, you know, with the anticipation of the $661 million, um, they keep asking, we want uh, details um, other than, you know, just talking about it. Okay, we know some's going to go to tourism, uh, revenue loss or lost revenue. But what about the details? You know, when CARES won, we saw the breakdown of the $118 uh, million and, and where uh, the admi administration's priorities are. But what about uh, the 661? And what's your response to them? 
So the details are uh, coming. I have already asked my fiscal team, Sabrina, to give me the details. There is already the template that we are using, the same template as we are using that we did for the coronavirus care set. Um, of course, the Republicans are going to oppose it and be critical. Not one Republican, not one Republican voted for this American relief package. Even when 75% of the people in America supported it. So, you know, uh, that's politics. They'll be there as criticizers. Um, that's fine. You know, uh, criticize all you want. But I am going to do what's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And the details of it will be coming. I already told uh, the senators, uh, the speaker, and uh, uh, other senators that once we fi we finish with the details, we will give it to them. Once we prioritize uh, what we're going to do, we'll give it to them. I, and you know, I under I don't understand this whole thing about not being transparent. I guess it's a default argument for the Republicans. But I am as transparent as, you know, can be. These are money of the people, Sabrina. This is not my money. It's not my money. And why would I not be transparent? That's what I would ask. Why? Is it because I don't want to share it with them? No. You know, the more you share and the more you communicate. I told Jim this. I said, Jim, pick up the phone and call me if you have any questions. Pick up the phone and call me. Uh, yeah. Gov, um, so, so I am very transparent. Right. Mm -hmm. when, when uh, you, I don't you, know where their justification is on that. Gov, when you talk about uh, giving the details over to the legislature, uh, do you think they should be more involved in having a say about where uh, any of the $661 million is going to go? Or are you content? Sure, they can, you know what? They can come. We can meet. Tell me. I already told them that once I put my priorities forward, I am going to give it to them. And I'm going to ask them, hey, is there anything here that we're missing? Because, listen, I don't want anybody met, missed. I don't want any, anybody not included in this. This is about our island. This is about our people. I, I have no, I have no justification for holding any of this back. Serious. It's money. It's from the federal government. It's from tax dollars. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't understand it. Yeah. Gov, what about the uh, Dr. Cabrera, Dr. Shea, uh, PXC? What are your, your comments on that? We talked to Crystal and, and she said that uh, you were planning on signing off on Likely. Dr. Cabrera's uh, complaint. Might be, right? Likely. Yeah. Likely would be signing off on it. So, I don't so, know. I don't know. I haven't seen a Dr. Cabrera complaint. So, what are your thoughts on that kind of back and forth between uh, Shay and Cabrera, though? Um, I, you know, uh, it's a uh, it's a situation that the two of them have to work out. Uh, I think there's valid points on both sides. I I think especially more important is that when um, professionals go out there and speak, that they should speak from accurate information mm -hmm. and they should speak from accurate science mm -hmm. and again, evidence. And, you know, like, like Dr. Fauci does. Why do you think Dr. Fauci is very well respected? He, he has the credentials. He's an expert. And he sees all both sides. And when he talks, he talks from facts. So it's very important for me that any medical expert or any scientist out there that speaks need to make sure that their information is accurate and can be justified with science. That's my whole thing. I wanted to get back on the 661 uh, million and just uh, just a question on uh, in your state of the island address you did mention um, uh, using some of it to build a, a new hospital yeah yeah can you so my thinking on that Sabrina is this right this whole pandemic is driven by our protection of our healthcare center of course and our protection of the lives of our people and the health of our people. 
but if we don't do that, it would impact our healthcare delivery system. And this pandemic has shown the significance of that and has shown the potential outcome if it would happen. And so uh, these monies are to be used for negative impact as a result of COVID. And our facility um, was not, our facility had it had to be retrofitted mm -hmm. and re-electricized or whatever they say, they redid the electricity so that they can uh, continue to provide ventilation, vent, um, ventilation to people that are sick and not just in ICU, but in other parts of the hospital. And so it was very evident that we needed to really upgrade and improve our hospital. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I am targeting at least $300 million set aside for this new hospital. And it's very much, uh, I, you know, I would argue that it is very much related to COVID because I'll tell you this, this virus or variants of this virus or another emerging infectious virus is going to happen. It's going to happen. So we need to be as prepared. It's just like typhoons happen in Guam. These pandemics are going to be happening. And so the more we are prepared to provide the healthcare service for our people, the better. And I can, I will justify very hard uh, that these monies is exactly what uh, what is going to be used for to build a new hospital. And I am going to get a new hospital, Sabrina. I am. I am really work hard. I already told, uh, uh, I saw um, uh, Superintendent uh, Fernandez on your show just right before, I, and I told John, John, we are going to build this uh, school, Simon Sanchez, and we are on our way. We've given them the money for the A&E design, they're going to have to work with the with the community to find out, you know, how best we can build this hospital for their needs. And I'm going to make sure there's going to be windows in this. Uh, sorry, in this school, there's going to be windows in this school. Believe me. <laughs> in case the aircon doesn't work, right? Is that what you're saying? Guys? What? In case the aircon doesn't work, there's going to be windows yes, so they can vent absolutely. ventilate. Absolutely. Hey, when I was growing up, going to school, we didn't have aircon. And and the and the school system right produced some very good leaders, very uh, successful professionals. Maybe we need to take out the aircon in the schools then, huh? Put back no. put back louvers. <laughs> no, not louvers, but it has to. You're right. It was louvers that we had. Right. Those yeah. little glass louvers, the yeah. slats. Gov, anyway. what about the RISE Act? Are you planning on using any of the 661 million? Yeah, you know, million? they were talking, to, I need to look at the RISE Act with my legal people because it is also, it was also contingent on um, federal monies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say this, the EIP, I don't know if you guys are, are aware, the EIP will give $1,400 to single filers with 75,000 and below salaries. It would give $2,800 to joint filers with uh, salaries of 150,000 below, right? What is, what is added to this is it'll give $1,400 to every dependent in the household, regardless of age. So even adults. So that's really, uh, I think, very generous. And they're saying this, um, this piece of legislation, the American, American Rescue a plan, of course, by the Democrats in Congress and will be signed by a Democratic president is very liberal. But but it 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 is because people have lost their jobs. They have they they don't have money to put food on the table. And so they're saying that 20% uh um 20 percent of the Americans will be lifted out of poverty. And I am also saying that that will also reflect in our people here. So you have the PUA, you have the EIP, businesses will continue on with the PPP program. There's specific funding just for restaurants. 
uh, there's specific funding separate from the 661 just for education. And I don't know if John mentioned the amount, but you know, there's billions given to high school and elementary, even to non-public schools like your your private schools. Um, they are also given, I think, 2.5 billion. They have to share it, right? And I don't know how much it is for us, how much that trickles down to us. Uh, John will know uh, mm -hmm. more the details, but that's separate funding from the 661. It's also separate funding for healthcare. And also, I think there's some funding for premiums. I'm not I'm not sure. I, I need to relook at that again. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of details that we have to go through with this uh, American Rescue Plan. Uh, and I'll tell you this, I was very nervous in the beginning because I wasn't seeing territories in the in the um, in the bill. And so I worked with, uh, of course, our congressman. And I worked with former Congresswoman Madeline Berdalli, who has really good friends in Congress. And she immediately picked up the phone and talked to Speaker Pelosi and talked to Senator Macy uh, in, in the Senate, Senator Feinstein, and made sure that territories are included. And they called her back and said, Madeline, territories are included. So I am very uh, happy. And if you also listen to the national news, they're now saying states and territories. Nice. Uh, I count that. I count that. <laughs> we got to tell Marjorie Green about that, uh, Gov. Oh, yeah. Can you, Chris? Oh, I heard well. she's a friend of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't that crazy, Gov. Uh, Gov, uh, we wanted to ask about, because um, you talked about former Congresswoman Madeline Berdalio, and I know Senator Moylan has a bill uh, that's trying to eliminate the D.C. liaison office. I know. Yeah. I don't know why Jim is doing that. Um, maybe he, it's because he had experience from the past uh, liaison person who I heard through media, never even uh, stayed in Washington, D.C. and was living in California. But I'll tell you, my governor liaison person is a hardworking woman. She is. You know how Congresswoman Berdalio is. You know, she walks those holes. And I'll tell you this, Chris, which is very critical, I think, in terms of our if our, in terms of our presence in D.C. When I went to the Pentagon, my gosh, everybody knew Congress, former Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Perdana. Hi, Madeline. Nice to see you. The Department of Defense, the Secretary of the Navy, the Secretary of the Veterans Affairs. Well, speaking of so the... My my congressional, I'm sorry, my government uh, liaison office has done a lot in terms of D.C. Uh, politics. And to top it off, Chris, she, her, our office is right above the National Governors Association office. And the National Governors Association is a very powerful association that moves policy. And she would go down every day and say, make sure territories are included. Make sure territories are included. And the guy, Bill McBride, I think already, uh, Madeline gives him Roschetti and Gujaria every day. <laughs> not, not tomorrow chip cookies? No, I don't. I think she likes Roschetti. <laughs> <laughs> Gov, if you could, because I know you kind of brushed on it, but could we get uh, your just your comments and your take on uh, Congresswoman Green's uh, comments about, you know, not wanting any American taxpayer dollars to come to Guam? I know, you know, uh, I think it's a total ignorance on our part. And uh, I uh, I text Congressman Nicholas, can you go there and educate your colleague and tell her that, you know, we have the highest per capita deaths to fight of the freedom of our country. You know, with the highest number of military uh, people to fight for freedom for our country. We are here risking our lives being the national security gateway right of our country so i, I don't know i think even the republicans there are a little bit no leery about her <laughs> <laughs> gov I'm, I'm glad you mentioned uh, the department of defense because uh, yesterday the senate armed services committee uh held a hearing today the house armed services committee held a hearing on um, the Indo-PACOM region, the 
Pacific Deterrence Initiative and the Guam Defense System. I'm wondering if you had any thoughts on on what's being discussed in in Washington regarding, you know, preparing Guam and Guam being the centerpiece of this defense strategy with this uh, uh, defense system they want to put here to to deter any threats and send a message to China. Right. So I know they're talking about the AG's right. uh, system. And actually, uh, Admiral um, Davison had informed me about his vision on that. And of course, it's to strengthen the Pacific uh, Deterrence Initiatives, right? And so as he described the system, right now with the THAAD missile, that missile can only this is my so much, very yeah. simple understanding it's only one shot right whereas with this aging it's 360 degrees so the bottom line is that it'll uh, strengthen uh protection and um i thought about a lot about this and i've even thought of it thinking back about when the spaniards came and when the japanese came our island had no defense right i mean i think in the spaniards uh they shot a gun out already saying hey we give up <laughs> and and with the japanese you know we know the story about with the japanese mm -hmm. so strengthening that defense i think is going to give us uh much much more protection against the threats and forces of china and north korea um and so uh I am supportive of that. Uh, the more we can to fortify our island. We're already, you know, Sabrina, we're already uh, vulnerable. We, we saw it, the Spaniards, the Japanese, you know, uh, I don't know if you want to become Chinese uh, governed uh, island. I certainly don't want to be a Chinese governed island. Um, but uh, this is where I'm thinking. I'm thinking more national security. I'm thinking more protection for our people uh, because we are already there. We are part of that threat. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if we say, all right, you military people, go leave. We don't want you. And they leave. Who do you think is going to come? And do we have military forces to fight against the Chinese or to fight against, you know, that's, that's the thinking, but also we have to make sure that they also uh, protect our waters, that our, our environment is protected, our culture is protected, and, and so forth. And that's why you have rules and regulations set forth that are signed to make sure that they, they do follow and comply with the laws of cultural preservation, uh, preservation cultural, um, you know, uh, sustination and so forth so gov i wanted to ask with the uh 661 uh million you know people have been talking about uh, some of the hiring being done by your administration and with some of the the pay adjustments but with this infusion of the hundreds of millions of dollars from the feds do you think that um those people who talk about having to be fiscally responsible or cutting corners or downsizing the government do you think those points are moot now that we're, we're receiving this uh, huge injection of federal money? You know, this 661, uh, Chris, I'm going to treat it very conservatively. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, okay, open the doors, so everybody come. No, because I have to, I know that it has to be sustained. So if I hire more police officers, and if I promote more police officers and promote fire department people, or I hire more public health people to stand up a Bureau of Emerging Diseases, I need to make sure that it can be sustained moving forward. Mm -hmm. so, so that's my answer. Those pay adjustments and those pay adjustments went to DLC, DYA. We're looking at the nurses for pay adjustments. We're looking at the teachers for pay adjustments. Those hiring that I have done, I have done in public safety. I have done in public health. I have done in GMH. We hired over 80 nurses from the United States to come here during the pandemic. And we use the CARES Act money to pay for those nurses. So I am gonna use it conservatively. 
I am going to use it deliberately and I'm going to make sure it's to improve the quality of life of our people. Right. Uh, and Gov, just aside from um, the government of Guam, uh, you did say in your in your State of the Island address that some of the 661 would be used for small businesses and nonprofit organizations. Can you talk more about that? And and I guess sure. how much more? The, the, you know, I really like this relief package because it's not just going to government. It's going to businesses, it's going to restaurants, it's going to nonprofit organizations. I'm already talking to SHRM, you know, the yeah. the Human Resource Association. Hey, I'm gonna give you money for if you're if you need to do research about pay compensation or even survey about human resource. I'm gonna help them, you know. Um, so so it will go to nonprofit organizations. There's others, you know. Um I can't think of others on on the top of my head, but the fact that nonprofit organizations are also eligible is a really good thing. Small businesses already GITA, you know, Sabrina, we already have the infrastructure for grants, small business grants, individual grants, a Salapi para Azuda grant, a program and Salapi. All that, we have that. We have rent relief, which is a separate kind of funding. We have mortgage relief, that's a separate kind of funding. We have the uh, paycheck protection program, which I have heard a lot of people. I think it was like uh, close to 280 million that was infused because of that. And they're getting more. we're, We're getting $85 million just for the small business initiative. That's separate from COVID, but $85 $85 million just for Guam for the small business initiative. So there's a, you know, this is the right time to be creative, innovative, and and being being an entrepreneur. We will, we will help those small businesses and businesses in general. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we are going to work, uh, Chris and Sabina, to improve our, our inefficiencies in the processing of our permits in the processing of our driver's license, our business uh, vehicular registration. I just want to put a plug in, okay, about vehicular registration. Everybody that needs to uh, register their vehicle, go online. My gosh, it only takes five minutes. I tried it. You know, you go, I'll tell you how to do it. Go to the safety inspection, get your car registered or inspected it'll automatically send that result over to drt you get online they'll uh, register you you print your registration right there and then your tags come in two or three days mm-hmm. and it's not because i'm the governor of guam because <laughs> there were other people that told me about it other people told me about it and it wasn't my car. I don't have a car right now. It was my mother's car. I don't know who my mother, Eugenia Leon Guerrero, is. Oh, it's the governor's mother. Let's make sure it's efficient. No, it's efficient for everybody. Right. Just wanted to put a plug in for that. Oh, yeah, Daphne's. Yeah, she's big on the awesome. online. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gov, you know, so, oh, she's awesome. so we had Lester uh, down to the legislature yesterday, right, in the budget uh, talks, are, uh, and they're working out things with the budget. But I wanted to ask, are, are we going to adjust the revenues to reflect the $660 million uh, from this? Uh, no, we're going to, um, we're still going to go with the revenues that we project and whatever shortfall we will, we will, you know, put that in to get them over the year. Okay. Uh, I That's do. how I see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we, I have a question. This is actually from uh, Nestor. Um, president's next major initiative after COVID, um, there will be million, billions more in Fed funds available. The H-2 approval for private sector was huge. Um, is your administration working on a wish list of shovel-ready projects? Yes. Okay. Fisherman Co-op is a shovel-ready project. I'm going to get a Fisherman's Co-op also. I walk at the Paseo and I feel, man, even if I was a dead fish, I wouldn't want to be in the Fisherman's Co-op as it is right now. Because, and, I, and I'm telling the fishermen this, I'm telling the Fisherman Co-op board people, get it going. And so they already have the plans. They already have the design. 
um, the port authority is going to uh, be the one to fix the shoreline because they have to fix the shoreline. Shoreline, it's their responsibility. So port authority is going to do the shoreline, and then um, I think I think their fisherman co-op money uh, f- uh, building is about maybe three to four million. I- I'm not sure. I think it's three to four million, and. Kin Flores is the chair of that project. Mm-hmm. And Kin is working very closely with Gita to get it going. I really, I it'll it'll first, I think, stimulate fishing in Guam because now there's gonna be a really uh, larger space for fish to be sold. Mm-hmm. And um and it it needs, I don't know if you've ever gone there, Chris. It Matt really Gump, needs. I got to defend I, 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 I got to say, I get all my fish at the co-op. I love those guys. A great bunch of uh, people. But you're right. I mean, Di- it'd be great fish. to have a, an awesome uh, new facility. Mm-hmm. But the dead fish that I get there, they seem okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm not, I don't mean that to say the dead fish or <laughs> what's being sold there is not good, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. You know what I mean. I know what you mean, though. <laughs> It's sort of like, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Like my grandma said, but you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> you, you mentioned the Port Authority. Okay, so they've been in the headlines, uh, obviously. Boy, but, they? Right. But I wanted to talk about the Port Authority in a sense that, you know, Rory came out. He said that um, he, he, there's an investigation there, an FBI investigation into uh, gambling. And, you know, prior to that, we heard about the airport authority. Then it became the Guam Power Authority um, uh, with this online gambling uh, on duty. Have you what have you heard uh, regarding um, Guam employees gambling online and and on duty? And how concerning is that to you? Of course, it's a concern. I, I don't talk to the FBI, so I don't know, you know, what they don't share information yeah. like that. Um, I do know that if there are those violations in the various agencies, I'm very confident my directors are going to do the right thing mm-hmm. and they're going to comply with investigations and they'll make sure people are uh are uh being investigated they'll they'll they will make the investigative process uh go through and and uh come up with the results because it's very it, it, we have to because you know violating laws like that is not an acceptable um it's not an acceptable behavior for our government absolutely yeah, I think it, I think it was just kind of surprising because when when the documents came out at the airport and then, you know, it said, whoa, 250 other people, you know, from GPD, you know, GFT. Yeah, I, I you know what, Sabrina, I'll wait for the results of the investigation and I'm pretty sure my directors will act accordingly. Right. I have every confidence in them. Yeah. Gov, what about the other um, and uh comments made okay wait can i just say one last question because i really got to go yeah thanks chris go ahead oh no bring go ahead no go ahead i was just gonna ask about the um there's a judiciary oversight where uh they were kind of talking about some of the things that are coming out of these federal court cases relative to uh dirty cops uh, corrupt law enforcement local uh law enforcement and i know there are some things uh, in motion but uh, i just wanted to get your uh, comment on that gov is that a a concern from you when you hear these things coming out of the federal courts? Absolutely, it's a concern. I want our our government has to be uh, of high integrity. Our government has to be trusted. Our government has to make sure that we don't violate any rules and laws that we've made. The, this is the only way our people can trust our government. And if if violations of law happen. We have to correct that and we have to put in the necessary processes to prevent that, whether it's improving our controls, improving, you know, ways that we we handle uh, our services that will be done. Um, You know, this happens everywhere, Chris, and I'm not saying that as an excuse. It's how we 
respond to it. And my response is, we will not tolerate that. We have, our people deserve a government that's honest, a government that's safe, a government that's compassionate, and a government that's prosperous. So those are those are the values of our government, and uh, I will do everything, and I know my directors will too. I have every confidence in them, like I said, that if there are any of these violations happening, they will act accordingly and do disciplinary action. Gov, we, we appreciate your time uh, so much, and we really would like to have you uh, come on the show on a, a, any type of regular uh, basis. So maybe every other week or we work something out, uh, people love to hear from you. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Gov. Thank Thanks, you, Gov. That's that. Okay. There you go. Uh, what did she say? You were also saying oh, yeah, you, you were asking, and you said, I wonder if she's a Tupac fan. Crystal actually, she messaged me on the side, and she, go, she goes, oh, she was wondering who like who Tupac is. But I know for a fact, when I did that interview with her for Cruising with KUM, right. she is a big, big-time Bette Midler fan. Oh, right, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. So I'm assuming if she's a big-time Bette Midler fan, maybe not so much on the Tupac uh, category, yeah. catalog. Hey, um, I'm a Bette Midler fan. You could I, be a Bette Midler fan. You could, you're and right. You're, okay, fan. I am a Bette Midler I fan. Almo, I almost got the gov. I said, come on, gov. Can we at least do like a couple bars? Like, Some say love. Oh, no, 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 Jay. But she, she wouldn't. But she, she does She does say she is a absolutely legit. Did you movie. ever know there that you go. you're That's my the one. hero? <laughs> you're everything I would like to, to be. be. I can fly uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't sing that part. Yeah, I can't either. <laughs> um, that was good. I hope we get her on more regularly. Yeah. Regularly, there what? is a lot of wind beneath our wings now. After yeah, that, after that interview, we got a lot of information from that. Um, we did, and uh, you know what the governor said about this uh, relief package? She said, mm -hmm. "I like it. I like it a lot, and uh, it does um, kind of seem like with the six hundred sixty-one million dollars that we could be uh, sitting pretty." And she said it's a bridge, okay? Yeah. It's, it's a bridge. But, you know, the $300 million t for a new hospital? Wow. Yep, this money's flowing. Uh, money's definitely uh, flowing. 848. We'll take a break, and we'll come back with the... I know his ears were burning during that interview, um, and unfortunately the governor was pressed for time. We weren't able to bring Senator Moylan on, but he is standing by, okay. and I'm pretty sure um, he's got some uh, things to say. So we'll go...